All right, all right, all right. So if you guys follow the Instagram, this is my Instagram handle right there. I haven't been blocked on there yet, but I fully expect it. Uh, you're familiar with this project, this build. This is a house my wife and I are constructing. Missing a panel because supply shortages. Other than that, it's coming together. And uh, a lot of people have asked questions in the DMs on Instagram. I get back to every single DM about the construction, about the build, about why did I decide to go with that type of construction as opposed to standard Southwest Florida concrete block type of stuff. There's a couple of reasons. Number one is we wanted land. Like number one deal, we wanted land. Um, some weird law of attraction stuff, but I, when I was a kid, this is a piece of land I wanted. And uh, I ended up mulching and clearing my neighbor that way. And then I mulched and cleared what is now a neighbor that way. That angle of attack right there is very good. Now you can see how you're building on the back. You want to come up a little bit, not changing the angle, but just bringing the boom up. And that would have been a perfect, perfect angle right there. And then when after we had purchased this property, I was mulching and clearing this. And I like drove the machine to the edge of the gate of the, the ditch and I saw a friend of mine's mother hands on the hip, the whole thing. Hi Travis. And I was like, oh yes, I remember. I wanted this land and, and now we now we have it. Now it's a reality. So nonetheless, we bought the land and we bought the land cash. And the way that we did that was we found this listing and it was out of our budget. And then it came down. So it was like listed at like 225, it came down to like 193. I told my parents about it. My mom's a real estate broker. Parents are both real, real estate people. Wife's a real estate person. And uh, mom's like, lock it in at 193. I'm like, eh, I don't know. There's a couple of concerns there. Like, you know, we, we, we did do an environmental inspection over the thing, like make sure it's all good. Mom's like, lock it in at 193. And, uh, and, and, and give yourself an out. So we did that. We locked it in at 193, gave ourselves an out like final minute, like 24 or 48 hours before we could like get out and get a deposit back. I pansy out, not pansy out that I throw, I throw a little temper tantrum and I'm like, nope, nope, I don't want to, I only want it for 150 and they took it. So we ended up getting it for 150 and I had all the Bobcats. So it was like, well, I can clear the place. And I, I way over, I underestimated what it would take to actually clear the place, seed the place, grade the place. Like even my original diesel fuel estimates were like way off. Uh, it was so thick. It was just super thick. So number one, um, we found that buying land was more of a cash deal. So that's why we, that's why we did this one. We were looking at other pieces of land and then this was like the most acreage that we could get for the price. It was like the perfect location. And then it just happened that the deal fell together. Like this land was never developed and the family that owned it had never been to it. <laughs> they were from Thailand and they were dispersed across the globe. Like the kids were like in three different countries um, and somebody had passed on and, and nobody like, it was just like an asset in somebody's portfolio. And anyway, we, we ended up getting it. Um, and so we wanted to keep the land away from the hands of a bank. Uh, so we looked at construction loans and we were like, well, you get a construction loan, even with great credit, it's through seven to 8% interest for a construction loan. This would be like in 2019. Um, so I was like, eh, it's a lot, you know, like if you borrow 200 grand, you're at 7%, that's 14 grand a year in interest that you're paying. And now what people will tell you is finish the house and then refinance it and you can get into like a 3% loan or something like that. That's like contingent. And in 19, if you guys watch Instagram, you guys know, I was like, yeah, we're going into a recession because we were. You guys forget how bad the economy really was shaping up to be in 19. And then a black swan shows up. Money printing everywhere. <laughs> so... Um, I was like, eh, you know, no guarantees there, you know, no guarantees that we're going to be able to do that. So what we did is we bought the land, then we, you know, sold some assets and did some projects and made some money and saved some money. And, you know, I, I basically cleared it, put the well in, which is like 10 grand. I brought the road base in, which is 82 trucks of road base. Uh, some of the street is actually from my childhood home. Uh, they were like milling it up and I was able to get some of it. So that's cool. Um, did the ponds, you know, all that stuff as we went and... And we finally got to building the house. And likewise, uh, just trying to do the project cash, no debt, at our own pace. This ended up, one, being the best solution to go off grid with, because I want to be ultimately on solar. I, I got a feeling, I, I got a feeling I know where we're going. And uh, I don't want to be on the grid. 
no, it's not me. Uh, so I want to be on solar. The energy calcs on this thing, like you should be able to run this thing for like 50 bucks a month uh, when I'm on the grid. So it's it's like a, it's like a cooler in there because it's like it's metal on the outside, it's metal on the inside. It's nine inches of insulation on the exterior walls. It's 13 inches in the roof. It's hurricane windows. You know, it's all that stuff. So so that's no, number one is like the energy efficiency and going off grid. This is the easiest structure to do it with. Uh, number two was we could build it in phases where we could build out the shell of the structure, which is like what we've got going on right now. And we could get like the parts of phase one that needed to be done for the shell, which is like electrical, um, AC, plumbing, what else do we have to do? All that type of stuff. And uh, depending on how we decide to do this, we actually can even do the concrete after the initial company is done. So what we've done is we've contracted with Morton Buildings, who builds essentially barns and barn aluminiums, which is what this thing is. And, uh, and they have been contracted to build the shell. And then back this way, there's going to be like a hallway and then there's like studs and there's master bedroom and bathroom and there's kitchen to put in and all that type of stuff. But that's not on Morton Buildings. That is just on us. So it's like we contracted with them. Their total cost to build this structure thingy is like 140. And then I've got like the AC guys. I don't know. I think my AC is like 22 grand to do the whole thing. The electrical, I think I'm in at like five grand so far. Probably will have to do like another five or 10 to finish that out. You know, et cetera, et cetera. Concrete's like 12 and a half. That's not including a driveway. Um, but it lets me build out one phase. And then I can continue going. So like once we've got this one phase done, then it's like, all right, we'll be studying it, you know, studs and then drywall. And it, it just lets me click it off without having to access a construction loan. So not only do we save the seven or 8% on the debt by not using the debt, we save additional because we don't have to use a general contractor, but there'd be a pro and a con to using general contractor. But we say about 20% there because we don't have to deal with the general contractor because no bank is requiring us to have a general contractor. So we can self-contract it, which is nice. Uh, so we save 20% there. We save 7% annually on the interest, which we would have paid at least two years or three years of interest on that, provided we could refinance it. If we couldn't refinance it, we could be stuck in paying that construction loan and not being able to refinance it, which would really suck. So if we got down the road in like 22 or something like that and I wanted to refinance it, I couldn't. Also, I'd have to risk or pledge the land that it sits on. So it's like, you know, we've come this far. Let's not give it to the, let's let's not make it a uh, an asset of the bank at this point in time. Now you could say, well, you just pay the payments. It's all good. It's true. No, absolutely. But um, I don't really want to give the title of this particular property to a bank. I don't, I don't see the need to. I'd like to have home base covered, like home base to be paid for, even if it takes longer, even if it's it's, it's less fancy. I'll, I'll finance rental properties. I'll finance warehouses. I'll finance stuff like that in the future, but I'm not gonna, I just, home base is just, let's just have it done. So that way, if everything in the world hits the fan, I can just read a book and drink some whiskey. And if I'm non solar, I can really not care. I mean, the taxes on the property are pretty cheap. We've got ag exempt. So it's like, can really just not care. And then if everything really goes to hell in a handbasket, like we can cash out, and we can loan against it, keep the property, rent it, and uh, and go roll elsewhere, which is like, it's, it's in my mind. I'm not uh, not guaranteed to stay here in the States for forever. So nonetheless, um, and then the last part of it was when we sat down to look at what we were going to build and we thought about using a construction loan, all of a sudden we were adding like a pool and like all the stuff we want to do in future years as we hit that level of like business success. We we're just like, oh, screw it, let's just do it now. You know, if we're gonna have a dirty mess out here and contractors and porta potty and dumpsters and all that stuff out here, then why don't we just get the pool and the fire pit and you know the pergola and the pizza oven and all that stuff? You know, why don't we just get it built now? So immediately we spent like an extra hundred grand on paper because it was like, well, we're just gonna we're just gonna get a loan, no big deal. We got plenty of equity in the land, was well, yeah, no big deal. And so it was like that would have been an extra seven grand a year in interest particularly for if I got stuck not being able to refinance it. So long story short, we decided to go to piecemeal the thing together in a way. In addition, we, uh, we cut the garage off because like when we did our initial budget, we were like, eh, I had a big three car garage, which I wasn't super happy with because it was like, it's a big garage, but it wasn't like the garage, you know, it wasn't like I got nine cars in here. 
which I'm not a car guy. I've never owned a car in my life, but at some point in time, like as I get more into my mid thirties, I'm planning on getting some cars. I got a couple cars I want to get. 69, 68 Camaro, that's on the list. Corvette, older Corvette, that's on the list. I've never had a car, but I really want those things and like a diesel Mercedes. Uh, but nonetheless, you need a garage for all that stuff. And so the three car was not gonna really do it. We had one, one bay was oversized. So I could fit a larger truck in there, like a 4,500 if I ever wanted to. Um, but what we decided to do was cut that off um, because this type of design had to, you had to go in eight foot increments because of the beams, like every beam has to be eight. So like, if you wanna expand the structure, you can't expand it by five feet, you need to expand it by eight feet. If you wanna make it wider, you can't expand it by three feet, you have to expand it by eight feet. That adds poles in the middle and it changed the whole thing around. So what we decided to do was cut the garage off at the moment and put the garage here later. And we put that door right there because that'll tie in. We'll tie it into, I oh, see, it's not even in there. There it is. <laughs> so we'll tie that in with a mudroom type of thing and then garage it out later. And then that what, what that'll allow us to do is have more of an epic man cave garage later on. Like when this thing is done and I save up some cash and I'm gonna up my, my investments a little bit more. Like I got, I wanna plug away and like a lot, a few other things, but at some point in time when there's like a really good downturn and things aren't crazy, we're not fighting for plywood and materials and all that stuff and people need work, I'll be like, hey, so I'm, I'm, gonna, build, I'm gonna build my garage. And it gives me time to think about what I'm gonna do there as far as the garage. And then there's still other pieces of the property where I've left a warehouse pad. So that's a whole nother, I mean, technically that could be the, the Epic Garage too. Um, or we just happen to just chill, like right kind of like where we're at and we bought the land so right based on our, the comps in our neighborhood. And we built the structure at a decent, I mean, so far, a decent per square footage cost that will be so up on the equity that it gives us options because I like the spot, you know, it's six acres, it's a good town. Like I like it, but I'm not saying I won't bounce to Mexico on like 600 acres in a heartbeat. Cause like the way things are going, I'm like, eh, I don't know, man. America's getting pretty, pretty fake. America's pretty fake. And uh, I, don't, I don't know, this wokeness and stuff. I'm like, eh, I might go be like an avocado farmer down in Mexico or something like that. What about the cartels? Have you heard of the three letter agencies here? I'm, I'm much more petrified of those thugs uh, than I am of the cartels. I'm sure they like avocados and I like, you know, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure there's, you know, ways that we can get along. <laughs> and, uh, but no, I mean, there's a lot of, I've been there several times. I got a trip later on this winter heading down that way, but I'm pretty bullish on, on other nations, but nonetheless, want to be in an equity position and uh, add on the pool and the garage and tie it in later as, as we earn it in a way, because, you know, as our net worth gets there, like, I don't want, you know, I didn't want to over, I don't want to say overdo it. Um, but you know, that, that, that type of deal. So more on that later, but the main reason that we went with that type of deal is it allows us to piecemeal it together. We were able to develop the property and we were able to do the shell and we are able to do the shell like and pay a builder, like pay the builder to be out of here as opposed to a traditional structure where you'd be, you know, paying for the entire thing all at once. And so it, uh, it let us get going on it a lot earlier because it was like, cool, we can get this phase done, we can get the next phases done. Now we're just waiting on contractors and materials. And if I'd known what I know now, I probably would have waited a little bit longer, I think, because I thought, like, oh, this would be great, man. We'll hit it right, right at the end of 19. The economy's going into a recession. And now we're like in boom town. But anyway, it is what it is. So that is what it is um i'll get into more details if you guys want comment below we'll do that later there's some window costs i didn't throw that in. it's like we did well on the windows and door my wife freaking nailed the windows and door it's like 18 and a half grand or something like that i think is what we and they're like all hurricane um one of them that came in cracked so we got to get that switched it's been on back order for like nine weeks <laughs> so anyway that is the uh the Barnuminium, the barn house, or the shop mahal, but there's no shop in there yet. Um, but uh, that is that is what we decided to do. And also, there's like a warranty on like the, the whole thing. Like the paint warranty is like 35 years, 35 or 40 years. The roof is like 50 years. And Morton's been around since like 1912, 1907. They've been around like a long time. It's a privately owned like family business. So, Basically, I'll be in my late 60s before I have to consider painting the place, and that's if I'm even here. 
so that's that's kind of nice it's like a, it's like literally like a a no maintenance structure that i can run off grid on solar and it's like hurricane rate up to like 165 or 170. it's relatively fireproof especially on the exterior and um you know it's just like no work like i don't want to have to really i don't want to have to go to work to pay for the home base to cover the, the monthly nut like i don't want to do that i want to just have a place to sleep and if i didn't really have family i'd, I'd probably would be living in a van anyway so hope you guys enjoyed it peace catch on next <laughs>